All right, welcome back to the Sports Barn. Tuesday, uh, December 8th, I don't know, around midday-ish. Uh, well, I wanted to get you some college basketball picks for tonight. We got a big slate of college basketball here on this Tuesday. Eric, the big E Arnold. Uh, we're, you know, working our time thing here. You know, uh, last year, <laughs> we're actually now starting into our second year of college basketball. Uh, that's our record from last year in college basketball. Uh, that was our year one of the uh, sports barn, I guess, the first season here in the sports barn. Uh, and that would be a legitimate record. In other words, no COVID. Uh, those were, you know, they, 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 back in the day, they used to have things called crowds. And uh, some of these arenas would get pretty, pretty big crowds. I mean, people would sit literally right next to each other and, and yell, yell. And it was, uh, you know, gave you a home court advantage because if you had a, were able to put a lot of people in the building, you made a lot of noise and that made it hard to play if you're the opposing team. Anyway, that's a legitimate record. That's probably around 52%. Uh, considering what we're doing in college football this year, I mean, that makes us look like Nostradamus. So I'm not embarrassed by it. It was year one. You know, we're hoping to do better this year. I still haven't, I mean, I think last winter what we were doing was getting out here in the middle of the night before the games would play, giving you a good, you know, 18 hours of lead time uh, before tip-off. Uh, well, I don't know if we're going to get back to that just yet. You know, we probably will in January. That'll probably be the schedule. But right now, we still have the uh, tail end of college football season to address. And uh, uh, then, of course, pro football. So I don't know if we're going to be getting out here in the middle of the night doing college basketball videos. We'll see. At any rate, let's get you what we got here. We got four games for today, Tuesday. Uh, yesterday, the NFL, the Monday after, or whatever you want to call it, Monday doubleheader. <laughs> we lost with the Steelers. I mean, wouldn't you know it? That was the game I had the strongest feeling on. And, uh, yeah, the Steelers have a 14 nothing lead, and, uh, you know, they just blew it. You know, they dropped more passes than they had all year. I guess a little stat said they dropped more passes than any NFL team has all season. Uh, you know, one of the problems with the Steelers, and ultimately that'll be their demise, is they, they don't, they either don't or can't run the ball. You know, right, what happened to my grandfather's Steelers? Even my father's Steelers? What happened to the Bill Cower Steelers? You know, this, this, when they were clicking and they piled up that 14 nothing lead, I thought to myself, you know, it's almost like a ballet watching these guys. I mean, it's so precise. It's so, these receivers run such precise routes and the ball is always right there. And the receivers, uh, you know, will be leaning out of bounds, but they got their toes in bounds. And it's almost balletic how they do this. And it's almost unstoppable. And then, and then, you know, when it wasn't working, and they're, you know, it's almost balletic, except when they drop the ball, you know, then it all grinds to a halt. So, you know, maybe that's the flaw here in the Steelers is one-dimensional teams don't win the Super Bowl. Uh, so they lost. Uh, uh, that was disappointing. Uh, we were in the right place with the Bills. They were much the best. Uh, and then our two college basketball games were basically – this one was certainly an easy winner. Uh, Arizona, they covered that number by halftime. Won by 40. Poor old North. <laughs> I'm telling you, Northern Arizona. Here's your opener. Go play out Arizona. Uh, uh, oh, and they're interested. They want to play. <laughs> that, that was bad for, uh, good for us, bad for them. Oregon squeaked by. They, they, that was a close game. A lot of the game, I'm like looking at the ticker. It's like, shit, we're only up three. Uh, and then at the end, it just kind of went whoop, just like I was hoping. 
So nice start there in college basketball, which oh you know winning always makes me want to do more. You know it's a you know a, a, the opposite works the same way. Uh, when you're losing, then this becomes work. And I uh, I've said to myself, I've told you many times, I'll make these videos until it becomes work. And when it becomes work, well then you get what you get. So uh, last night was fun. Let's have some more fun. I guess this is at like five o'clock, you know, again, COVID. There's no telling when these games will be played because, you know, they don't have a crowd to worry about, so they just schedule them whenever. Uh, Seton Hall, they are, you know, they're, you know, Big East team, nice team. Uh, lost a couple of their top senior players. What was his name? Miles Powell. Uh, there was another guy, I think, uh, Quincy McKnight. Well, they're gone. So, but you know, it's a it's a Big East program. They they've got more talented guys coming up. They were on the bench. Now these guys get to play. Um, Wagner. They are a. Uh, I'm going to say a Northeast team. I hope that's right. I hope that's right. Uh, Seton Hall is much the best here to me. You know, this is just a class play. Uh, the Wagner coach, we're not excited about his record. Uh, he's been there for like 10 years. I don't think he's made the tournament once. He's just kind of there. Uh, Seton Hall, the, 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 their coach, we think he's pretty good. You know, he, I think my note said he was a Patino guy. Uh, so uh, this is Wagner's first game. Again, we're back to this again, where Seton Hall's played some games. It, it, they, they, you know, they're working it out. They're getting some uh, uh, minutes. They're starting to learn uh, to play with each other. Wagner, first game, tough, tough uh, assignment. First time out, Seton Hall, which is much, much better than they are. So we think Seton Hall's just going to blow these guys out. I think I put this, yeah, I put this one down as two stars because uh, I'm just double checking my notes here. Yeah, I, I like that one pretty good. I mean, uh, you know, we got everything I look for. A bad coach, um, first time they're playing against Seton Hall has already played. Yeah, this is what we like. We'll take Seton Hall there. Okay, so here's some action for you people. I know a lot of you are Ohio State fans. So here's some action for you. We got Ohio State going to South Bend. They're five and a half point favorites at South Bend. Um, what do we think about this? Well, I'm going to, uh, uh, one of our uh, 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 number one subscribers is Rusty Hall. And Rusty subscribes to the theory that what in the hell has the ACC done for me lately? So we're going to go along with that. We think Ohio State is the play here over an overrated ACC team, Notre Dame. Uh, I think Chris Holtman is a better coach than Mike Bray is. Um, now, I was looking to watch a little bit of some of these Ohio State games, a little bit, not a lot. Uh, and I thought, well, we don't have that big guy that, uh, uh, what was his name? Wesson. Wesson. Uh, 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 that's how old I am. I went to school when his father played at Ohio State. So, you know, Caleb Wesson, he's gone now. Uh, so we don't have that big guy in the middle, but I thought, you know, this team kind of looks a little bit like Villanova. Uh, they, they've got those guys that are all between... 6'4 and 6'7, six, 6'8, six, and they all can shoot. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's what Villanova tries to put together. Uh, you know, it's almost an interchangeable part type team where everybody can shoot a three. You know, that's the key. You got to be able to shoot. So I'm kind of hoping that's what Ohio State's putting together. That's a dangerous team if it is. Uh, so we'll lay the five and a half at South Bend. Uh, we like Ohio State there. Uh, this is another one where we're trying to hit a class mismatch, if you will. An SEC team, uh, Mississippi State against a SWAC. 
team. Uh, Mississippi State's only laying 17 and a half against a SWAC opponent. Uh, yeah, we're kind of hoping that uh, uh, Mississippi State's able to just uh, outclass these guys, get up by 25, and make the other team tap out. Uh, so one star there with Mississippi State. And then lastly, uh, this is another ACC Big Ten Challenge game. Uh, there, there are a lot of nice games. I mean, you know, you got Illinois Duke. I couldn't really, eh, you know, couldn't come up with something there. Uh, you had North Carolina, uh, Iowa. What a nice game that is. Um, yeah, is North Carolina back to being good again? I mean, they that, remember last time we saw them, they sucked. <laughs> I mean, I know that seems like a thousand years ago, but they were bad last year. Uh, and uh, now they're playing Iowa, and I think North Carolina's ranked. So I guess we're back to North Carolina being good. Um yeah, I, I, my gut kind of wanted to go North Carolina there. I just, you know, I'm not a big Fran McCaffrey fan, the coach at Iowa. Uh, and, and I just kind of thought, oh, you know, one of these is not like the other. In other words, uh, North Carolina is just going to outclass Iowa. Uh, that, that they're just going, you know, Iowa is not going to be able to stand being favored over North Carolina. And, yeah, it, it just wouldn't work. I don't know. But then I, I, you know, I left that one alone. I couldn't really decide. But this one I had a pretty good read on, I think. I saw Virginia Tech. I pretty much watched that whole game when they played Villanova. Uh, they beat Villanova, which irritated me to no end uh, because I'm a Villanova fan, of course. Uh, but... Uh, that was Villanova's third game in four days. I thought, well, Villanova's just tired. They're doing tired things. They're front rimming shots. They're doing tired things. Nevertheless, uh, I think Villanova's probably one of the best teams in the country. And if you can beat them tired or not, that means you're pretty good. That means you're pretty good. Uh, I think Virginia Tech has a good coach. Um, I think his name's Anderson. Anderson, that's me. Uh, Anderson there, he... Uh, Used to coach at Wofford, I believe. Uh, made that Wofford program into the Southland power that it is. Uh, so uh, that's a good coach there. Penn State, they got a lot of disarray going on uh, where Pat Chambers was shown the door uh, in the midst of yet another Penn State investigation. Uh, and now the guy they got there is an assistant who'd failed at Duke, uh, or uh, Duquesne, Duke, yeah, not Duke, Duquesne. Uh, out at Pittsburgh. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think that uh, Virginia Tech's got much more solid foundation here. They probably are simply better than Penn State. And we'll take Virginia Tech at home in Blacksburg, uh, two stars there over Penn State, lay the five and a half. Uh, so, yeah, I actually did look, you know, I pay attention to this because I don't want to get pigeonholed into doing all one thing. I got all favorites again. Uh, but, yeah, I think we're in the right place. Seton Hall to crush first time out Wagner, late the 21. Uh, Ohio State outshoots Notre Dame up at South Bend, lay the five and a half. Mississippi State lay the 17 and a half over the SWAC team. And then uh, at home, Virginia Tech uh, lay the five and a half over a discombobulated Penn State. So there you have that. All right, there's your college plays, uh, college basketball plays for Tuesday, the 8th of December. Um, more videos coming, don't know when. Talk to you later. Thanks for being here. Hit the like button if you care to. I always appreciate it when you do that. Thanks, and I'll talk to you later.